Hey, welcome to Nomadic Moments. My name's Jake. Uh, over the next few weeks, we're going to be doing some vlog posts on how we renovated our truck camper, uh, Yolum, to become a full-time living space. I hope these vlogs help some of you out there thinking about becoming nomads understand the challenges that can be overcome in making this lifestyle a reality. Today, we're going to go back and take a look at our first and largest renovation project that we did, where I took a little bit of electrical knowledge, a lot of research, and a big portion of our budget, our renovation budget, to create a fully functional solar system that allows us to stay on the off the grid and on the road full time. All right, so back behind me here is our solar system, uh, in pieces anyways. Um, the batteries aren't back there, they're in the kitchen. We're going to take all of this and uh, we're going to turn it into a solar system. I spent about a month uh, getting ready, ready for this, doing research, trying to figure out exactly how to put together a solar system, how to really make it safe and um, and be what we would need it to be uh, in our camper. I would say, you know, if you're going to undertake something like this, just make sure you do your research, you understand the risks involved. So here we are in the camper. Um, going to take this converter out. Well, we will be putting an inverter in, but uh, we won't be converting from 110 down to 12 over. We'll be inverting power from uh, 12 to 110 on occasion, but um, there's a storage area underneath the seat here uh, where the water is. We're gonna put the batteries back in there. As you can see, I already kind of shoved them in there, but I haven't wired them up yet. Those will be the last thing actually wired. Just trying to figure out where everything goes. That's the first step, so. All right, I got the converters panel pulled away, as you can see. Um, so we're just gonna trace all these wires down, figure out where they go, and get them labeled up. See, I've got the converter completely removed. Uh, I've got all my light, my wires labeled. I had to trace them back and um, figure out where they were and what they were doing, and I had to split a few things out as well so that uh, I could separate the fuses. I'm gonna have uh, the switch panel installed so that uh, I can turn things on and off easily take the load off the battery. Yeah, that's where we are so far. That was the end of day one. It got dark, so I had to, I had to quit after that. So I've got uh, a lot of gear to mount in here, and so I'm trying to find a place to put it. And I think what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna widen this hole, the hole that uh, I have by creating or removing the uh, converter that was in there before. I think I'm gonna widen it and then uh, put a panel on a hinge in there. That'll allow me to uh, mount most everything to either to the front or the back. That's the plan, so we're about to start cutting. All right, so we're moving along here. Um, I'm working on trying to figure out where everything goes. I think I've got it figured out uh, as far as how to mount it on the panel um, so that everything gets reached. As you can see, uh, there's a lot of the DC stuff. This is gonna be switches and our fuse box. This has fuses in it, but um, I'm not gonna put everything on this because uh, I don't want everything on a switch. Uh, I got my uh, box for my breakers for my uh, AC fuses for the end lines. The Bogart Trimetric system, which is pretty cool, I think. Uh, everybody says they're the best, but they send you these boxes and there's no holes in them, so I just had to drill a half inch hole uh, for my access for the wiring. I guess they do that so that you can make sure it comes out on the side that you want it to come out on. I guess that's smart. Um, so yeah, we just had to drill a hole. Got that drilled and that's gonna go right there. I've mounted a, a positive bus bar right here on the bottom side, along with a main fuse here for the battery. And then um, I'm gonna mount the negative on the sidewall of the camper over here. And then I've got this, this bus bar, this miniature bus bar for uh, the different solar panels coming in because I'm going to have some that are portable as well as some as, that are mounted on this on the roof. And that's going to go right up underneath here, preferably away from the water. There's a little bar here that I can mount to. So I'm going to mount one in front of the other, so one for the positive and one for the negative. Um, so yeah, that's what we're doing. And then I've got my inverter as well, and that's going to mount right above the water supply, which is here. But I'm going to try to mount it above it so that if for some reason we leak water, um, it, I don't have to worry about it getting on it. It's a heavy sucker. It's the 300 watt Morningstar. The longest part of the process is just figuring out where everything mounts. Well, once you figure that out, uh, it goes pretty fast, I think. Hopefully. Um, I haven't gotten to the, the wiring. 
Well, here we are. We're about to uh, do what everybody worries about when doing a project like this, testing their sanity. Um, we're going to drill a hole in the, the roof for the, the wires to come through from the panels down to the battery bank. We've got this pipe type stuff uh, that we found at Home Depot, so that's what we're going to use to run the wires down through. And it's it's got a cut in it, so it'll slide within itself. So yeah, that's what we're going to use to put the wires in. So I'm I'm going to cut a, uh, a 7 8 inch hole through the roof. I think that's big enough for the two 6 gauge wire that we're going to use. Alright, so what I did is I uh, drilled a little pilot hole right up there uh, underneath all that pink tape. I drilled a, just a small little pilot hole so I could see where I need to drill down from the roof to be where I want the wires to come in. I also put that pink tape up there so that, you know, when the drill comes through, hopefully uh, it'll keep it from uh, doing what's called a blowout. We're gonna we're gonna drill a hole. The uh, the tape did its job pretty well, so it didn't blow out on us. So yeah, it looks pretty good. I'm gonna I'll show you the other side. So yeah, come with me. Okay, that's not working. We'll uh, continue here in a second. Here we are on the roof. I've got my hole drilled, and I've got my supplies here. This is uh, the weatherproof box we're going to use. Uh, it's basically made for outlets on the external of the home, but um, it's got a little lip that covers rain and it's all rubber sealed and stuff. So we'll use uh, some sealant heavily around the outside to make sure we don't have any leaks. Here's the box all weather sealed up. I used RV ProFlex to seal it. It takes several days to harden. I know it isn't the cleanest looking project but you know it does the job now that it's finally not raining um, it's been raining for like days here uh, I finally decided to put the solar panels on the roof so that's the project for right now it's supposed to start raining again this afternoon so I'm trying to get it done pretty quickly so so far I've cleaned the roof extensively I, I uh, soaked it down cleaned it off and then I used some mineral spirits to to clean it up really well and then rinsed that off and soaked it down one more time so I've already got one panel up here. Um, I've got it covered with a towel because that's what they say you should do so it doesn't generate any electricity um, because here in a minute I gotta splice the wires and, and wire all that together. Uh, I've got two of these to go on the roof. I may add a third. Um, they're nice and lightweight, which so I really like them. They're the flexible solar panels, which is kind of a misnomer. They've got a really thick plastic backing, so they're not super flexible, but they seem, uh, seem pretty good, seem resilient, so I think uh, I'm, I'm hoping to get a 400 watt system, so I may do 300 on the roof and then 100 watts of portable. I was thinking about doing 200 portable, but those panels are awful heavy, so I'm trying to keep my weight down as well. I settled on five solar panels in the end. The flexible panels are just so light that it doesn't make sense to go with the heavy rigid ones. I initially did mount the two 100 watt panels to the to the roof, but in the end decided that I would probably need 500 watts after I ran the actual calculations on what I was getting off of each of those panels on a less than optimal day. So it started to rain, but we're gonna continue on. I'm about to drill a hole. I've already kind of marked it with the drill bit. I'm gonna drill a hole right there. Um, and then that's where the pipe will sit and the wires will come down and go into the Go into the cabinet here. Um, as you can see, we got uh, pretty much everything mounted over here. I'm starting to wire some of these things together. As a side project to this, I'm actually uh, like I need something else to do. Um, I'm going to replace this uh, fixture with an LED fixture. There's some screws that I need to remove uh, on side inside the box. So I've removed the cap on it. I sprayed it with some WD-40. I found that WD-40 really helps uh, loosen up the sealants. And then I'm just using a putty knife um, and I'm just gonna go around the edges and I'm gonna just um, work my, uh, work it in there. So just like that and you can pop it off. So eventually I'll, I'll uh, get it all off. Okay, so that came off pretty easy. So I'm gonna put the new one on there. Um, before I do, I'm going to use some rubbing alcohol just to clean up the area, make sure it's nice and clean. And then um, we'll put some sealant on and then put the new unit on. We're gonna use all the old wiring um, on the inside. So, yep, that's it. I made some progress, as you can see, we've mounted 
pretty much everything to the back of the board. I've wired almost everything, I think, straight up. One thing I did forget, or well, I didn't realize I needed, uh, was coming off the negative shunt. Uh, coming off that shunt, there's six wires, so that bolt's not going to be able to support them. So I've got to get a, a bus bar for that. I do have a bus bar already for my positive side. I just I thought everything could come off the shunt on the on the negative side. Okay, I'm pairing the Trimetric 2030 uh, charge controller with this uh, TM 2030RB uh, battery monitor. Uh, so this allows you to see how the batteries are charging. Um, what the solar panels are doing, all that good stuff. So it's just monitoring the system. So I have chosen to put it, so the batteries are kind of behind me. This doesn't have to be close to the battery. So I've already cut my hole for the Trimetric 2030 right here. And I'm gonna actually slide it in from behind like this. And it'll poke through right there. And I've got to back, put a back plate on it just a little bit to hold it, hold it up. So hopefully it'll be more flush than anything. And get this thing to pan. You can see I put two holes over here as well. That's for a uh, USB charging station. It's, yeah, as you can see, it's kind of in the couch area, which is this whole place is a mess right now. But yeah, it's coming along. You'll see there's a hole right here. This is where the phone and coax jacks came into the camper. I stole the coax jack uh, out of the back of it to power the um, the Wii Boost, or at least get the antenna to the Wii Boost, I should say. All that was left was a phone jack, which is useless. So I uh, took that out and decided to uh, replace it with more USB. I had to widen the hole just a little bit. I'm gonna pop that right in there. And I went and got a cover plate. It didn't come with a cover plate, which was odd. I'd finished my wiring projects or so I thought, so I sold um, all the wire I had left in the yard sale. So instead of buying two more things of wire, which would have cost me twice as much. Um, I decided, well, I'll just uh, I'll just buy one color and it'll be a different color. So I don't really have yellow and I just labeled it with tape. So the black is positive and the green is, the green is negative. I've already got the, the USB outlet wired and ready to be put in. And now all I've got to do is wire this to my breakers and we'll be, uh, we'll be set and ready to test it out. So, um, yeah, pretty straightforward little project. Oof, what's going on here? All right, so there we have it, all finished up. The USB is mounted into place and working. All I did was uh, splice it into the existing line, so it's it's still on my. Uh, ooh, hello. Um, so it's still on that circuit right there. So. So all I did was splice it into the circuit so that it's still controllable by this rocker switch. So when I turn that on, all the USB comes on. And when I turn it off, all the USB goes off. So almost immediately upon finishing this USB outlet port, I realized the error of my ways. So it's right behind the sink and there's no caps for it. So what I'm going to do to fix that is I have this one that is a weather marine style. USB port right there. So I'm going to take that off and swap it with this one. That's plenty far enough away from the sink over here, so that one will work just fine over there. That's what we're going to do. We're just going to swap them. There's the finished product. Looks really good. I like the white right next to the Trimetric. And I've also got the uh, splash, bar, splash guard cover for the sink here now. So still got a port over here. All right, so we're getting closer. Um, the, I'm a little concerned about the inverter. I've got it mounted right there. Um, and then of course the seat goes right on top of it. It needs airflow. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna cut some holes right here in the door and then over off to this side so that the airflow can go around the inverter. And then to kind of grate those holes that I'm gonna cut, I, I went to Hobby Lobby and I got this. I may paint it it work as a vent, a decorative vent. So should look pretty cool with one on each side. It's a little, these are a little big for what's gonna be on this side. So I'll have to cut the one on this side, but I'll most likely just go full size over here. The hole may not be full size, but the, you know, the, this piece will be on the backside full size. I finally got this thing finished wiring. 
Um, I'm about to start flipping the breakers so the batteries will start charging. So it's that moment of truth. I've been told this may pop a little, so uh, if I scream like a little girl, forgive me. So I just closed the solar, and then I'm going to close the breaker to the battery. Make sure I got the right thing here. I'm going to leave the breaker open to the, um, the inverter and to the DC system so that uh, the batteries can charge up a little bit before they start filling that load. So looks like we're getting some readings over here. Zero, that is. But uh, with any luck, that'll start to charge pretty soon and we'll have our system up and running. We've been out on the road for several weeks now and this trimetric system is hard to beat. It works perfectly. Uh, this is the meter, it sees the battery, tells me what's happening. Um, where we're at as far as solar control goes, how much wattage we're getting off the roof, things like that. Works perfect. Um, I've done some testing with a voltmeter, seems to read it dead on. For a solar, small solar system project like ours, I don't see how it could be any better. The only issue I've had is that when I first got it hooked up, the meter wasn't metering. and I couldn't figure out why, and then I called some people and it took a little while, but it turns out that the phone cable that came with it I ordered it as package. It doesn't normally come with a phone cable. The phone cable that came with it was apparently bad, so I had to re-end the phone cable, and ever since then, I haven't had any issues. Power comes off the roof and through this tube, down into and through the sink area here, merging underneath here. You can see those two bus bars there. The red is the the red wire is the positive, and that comes down into a breaker and then from the breaker goes into the solar controller from the solar controller the power then moves to that bus bar there and then off that bus bar down that black heavy gauge cable into that 150 amp breaker and then over to the battery some power book flows both ways so when it comes off of the bus off the batteries it goes back through that breaker and then over to the bus bar where it then can go either to the breaker box via this 50 amp breaker or to the inverter off of this 60 amp breaker and then the power flows from there hey so that's it for our solar system i hope this helps some of you guys out there in creating your own system uh, links for all the gear that we used uh, can be found on our website, nomadicmoments.com, in the Solar System blog post page, the link for which is below, where you can click on that and find all the details you want and most of the details you don't care to know. Um, if you decide to do something similar, please read the post in its entirety as I talk a lot about the different factors that led us to our decisions. You should really understand the limitations of DC power and know what you are wanting to accomplish with your personal system. As electrical systems go, ours isn't huge and won't power things like kitchen appliances or AC units. If you are looking to do that kind of system, there will be a lot of different choices that you will need to make uh, that differ from ours. Namely, more batteries, more panels, beefier wiring, pretty much everything. Anyways, be sure to be safe and understand what you're doing when you create your own solar system. But if you have any questions, let us know uh, in the comment section and we'll do our best to help you guys out. And we'll see you out there on the road. Until then, we're going to keep traveling.